Okay, excellent. You can find me at markwarnsby.co.uk if you'd like to. So, Perella. So, the, these are these six stages that I've identified of, of, of customer engagement. And this is true of any business or service or organization. And those are perception, awareness, recall, engagement, loyalty, and advocacy. And if you're Harley Davidson, Apple, or Nike, you read it all the way to the end of that process. And arguably, Apple could double the price of their laptops, halve their marketing budget, and I suspect they would still have a viable business. So, and, but many of us are stuck on the way there. Mo mere mortal businesses and brands and consultants and people are stuck further down. So what I wanted to do is just zip through these quickly. I'd also like to touch on the concept of perception. And also, if we have time, Sindra, do stop me if I go on too long. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the concept of minimalist marketing for small businesses and startups. And um, definitions for those who are new to this, the difference between marketing, sales, and business development in my book is that marketing creates opportunities for business, sales closes those business opportunities, and business development is nurturing those relationships until they're ready to close. Apparently, I read the other day that at any given time, only 3% of the people you reach out to are in a position and able to buy the service or the product that you're offering. So nurturing is increasingly important there. So what I'd like you to think about briefly, there's a little bit of interaction here. Um, my workshops are designed to explore, capture and document what makes a business different, better and remarkable so that it is noticed, remembered and talked about. So give a little bit of thought now to how you might be able to be perceived as different. Um, what could make your prospective customers consider you to be the better option? And what would make you remarkable, um, get people talking about you? So if we go through each of those in turn, if I can move to the next, there we go. And a few other questions. Um, I'm sorry that I'm squeezing this in, um, but just the things to think about perhaps, and I'm more than happy to share this later. How do you believe your prospective customers currently perceive your business? Who is your target audience? Which marketing channels do you currently use if, you, if you're airborne? What do you think makes your business different from your competition? What do you think makes your business better than the competition in the eyes of your prospective customers and clients? And what do you think makes your business remarkable? So those are some, some notes just to, to get, the, get our brains working. Now, the perception of a business is really, really important. And I know Richard and Cinder have talked about this already. But I'd like you to look at this image here and have a look at the tiles marked A and B and decide which of those is darker. Is it tile A or tile B? I'm afraid, and, this, and congratulations if you spotted this, but they're actually exactly the same color. But the context that you're looking at this through has influenced what your brain has told you. And the same thing happens when we, when we, when we encounter brands, we encounter businesses. We, we have what I've started to call a personal ladder of comparative worth. So cars fall into that. Would you rather turn up in a battered Ford Escort or would you rather turn up in a, an Audi TT? There are, we, we all have a certain perception and those are aided by hooks and what I call an identifying characteristic for a business, something that people can latch onto and recall when they need to. Again, this I read this sentence a few months ago and I had to read it twice to fully understand the importance of it. Red Bull is a media company that makes money selling drinks. Red Bull is a media company that makes money selling drinks. Coca-Cola is a drinks company. There's such a significant difference in that, both in terms of the operational uh, processes at the business and how they are perceived. Um, so taking that note, what, can, how, what does that mean for your business? Um, is there an opportunity to differentiate yourself uh, using that process? And what do they really want? There's a lovely saying, somebody who buys a quarter inch drill doesn't really want a quarter inch drill. What they really want is a quarter inch hole. So it's really important to understand what it is that people, um, as Richard alluded to earlier, what is it that people really want to get out of this transaction? It may not be what you think it is. So 
perhaps give some thought to, to, to that. So different, better, and remarkable. Let's just pass through those a little bit. The marketing philosopher Seth Godin famously said, if you're not different, you're invisible. And he put Purple Cow. Um, do please grab a copy if you haven't read it. it. It changed my whole approach. So what is it about your business that, and the way that you work, importantly, that makes you different and noticeable? Um, because I'm afraid the same old, same old is not going to um, grab attention. We're in a very strange situation at the moment. It used to be, is that value for money? People now think more along the lines of, is that value for time? Is that value for my attention? Um, so for that initial interaction, it's really important that you're you're the purple cow. Better. This is this is a, a, a tricky one because most everybody considers themselves to be the best, and most of your competitors um, will be saying the same thing. But we can't all be the cheapest, and we can't all be perceived as the best. In fact, I read this recently, which was quite fun. 80% of drivers in a survey said they considered themselves to be above average, which of course is statistically impossible. Um, the, our assessment of the comparative betterness, if that's a word, of some of the options that we have um, for our money and our spending fall into these five categories, either price, quality, speed, ease of use, or convenience. And Chasing the bottom of the barrel to be the cheapest is, is not um, a sound business, um, unless you're Walmart. Um, quality, everybody claims that they are they have products of quality. Speed is a is a differentiator. I used to, I did some work with a printer who ended up being called the, the fastest printer in the East because he would absolutely faster than any other printer. It was something he could control, and the others couldn't do it as well as he he could. Ease of use and convenience are also um, important factors in that, in terms of trying to be perceived as better. Now, I define remarkable as a quality of a person or a business that gets people talking about them outside a referral. It's all very well for somebody to say, can you recommend a really good accountant? And for that name to be on the tip of your tongue, that's important. But what I want to have people to be saying, have you seen what Mark's, Mark Wormsley's been doing? That's, that's remarkable, the ability to remark. And for those of you who want good examples of this, have a look at the Zappos case study, Scott Ginsburg, and um, I'll have to tell you about Mortlake Curry House because that was my experience. But Zappos uh, is a shoe firm and bought by Amazon in 2009 for $200 million, well above the valuation of a shoe firm. And they didn't buy the shoe firm, they bought the, the culture there because two weeks after you started work at Zappos, they offered you $2,000 to leave. Um, crazy on the face of it, but the, the CEO um, said it's self-fulfilling. If somebody would rather have $2,000 than stay working as a part of my company, I don't want them in the building. And it became a famous culture and approach, so much so that Amazon bought it. Scott Ginsberg pictured here, so the great TED Talk, if you get a chance to watch it. He uh, left his badge on accidentally at a conference once and went to the bar and realized that everybody was coming up and talking to him. So he kept it on for 14 years. He also had a tattoo done so that it would work on holiday as well. It's a great TAD talk, a very good example of being different. He's now on his own. Everyone else in his sector is over there together. Mortlake Carry House, they, they asked me actually when I was living in Mortlake to come up with some ideas and, and it was the idea was heat. So we got lots and lots of plastic forks and we melted the ends of them and put key rings on them and posted them through the letterbox. The implication was that our carries are a little bit hotter. So what can you what can you do that's yes, perhaps a little bit gimmicky, but actually is going to have people talking about you? It was a remarkable success and they weren't putting every door, but every door, every the streets were all talking about them, which was great. So I hope that's of help. I can't see any hands or waving. Um Sindra, do let me know. I've um, got a minute to go. So I wanted to just to introduce you and set you a challenge called minimalist marketing. I didn't come up with this sentence. This again was Seth Godin at a conference a few, few months ago. Find your smallest viable audience and become the best option for it. And to do that, what I suggested you imagine you have in front of you three buckets. In the third bucket, you can only put one of your products or services and perhaps even just one aspect of it. In the second bucket in the middle, 
you can only put one small target audience for that product or service. And in the third bucket, you can only put one channel through which to reach them. Now, what this does is, does is it forces you to be focused around the most compelling product in your armory or service, but the people who are most likely to want to buy it, and you're, you're introducing it to them uh, through, uh, through the channel that, where they live. So but the trick is to set key performance indicators or targets for sales, for example, and you can't add to those buckets until you've achieved those targets. It's terrifying. I've done it. It works. It's liberating because many of us are spending our time and money across several marketing channels and spreading our resources so thinly that we don't make an impact anywhere um, and don't break the surface. So there we go. I'm someone's flattering at me, I think. Let me stop the sharing. Um, that's been me, Mark Warmsley. Thank you very much.